Hi, I'm Sophie Cunnington, Project Officer at Wild Oxfordshire for the Yellow Wagtail Project, and we're proud to be partnering with Church Farm Partnership, Lower Farm in Long Whittenham and Earth Trust. The Yellow Wagtail Project is a landscape scale conservation project which aims to restore four miles of wetland meadows and pastures along the River Thames and provide a place that can be enjoyed by people and allow farming businesses and wildlife to thrive. Here's a map of the project area. It starts at Cliftonhampton Bridge and follows the Thames all the way down to Shillingford. As you can see, the majority of our land is owned by our partners, with the green areas representing Earth Trust land, the blue representing Church Farm, farm Partnership land, and the yellow field up at the top here owned by Lower Farm. This has created a unique opportunity for a conservation project at a landscape scale. And the area encompasses a local wildlife site, a site of special scientific interest and a special area of conservation, as well as one high quality MG4 grassland. As you can see, both the River of Life project, which was uh, completed by Earth Trust in 2014, and their latest project, uh, River of Life 2, which will be launched in this year, are also in the project area. The Yellow Wagtail project will play an important part in Oxford, Oxfordshire's nature recovery network, with much of the site lying in the network's core zone and the rest lying in the network's recovery zone. So why should we restore these meadows and pastures? Well, wetland meadows have declined by 97% in England and Wales in the last 50 years, and now less than 3,000 hectares remain. This is largely due to drainage, the creation of flood defences, as well as areas being converted to arable land or even being built upon. But these habitats are extremely important and provide countless ecosystem services, like flood mitigation and carbon sequestration. They have a huge cultural heritage. Wetland grasslands go back to the Neolithic times when woodland clearance likely resulted in a rise in floodplain water levels. The annual deposition of silt and the development of farming practices led to the traditional meadows and pastures that we now know today, some of which are around a thousand years old and support unique plant communities and species like the snake's head fritillary and the narrow leaf drop, uh, water drop wort, both of which are nationally scarce. These habitats also provide homes for many invertebrates and birds like the yellow wagtail and they uh, provide extremely productive, sustainable and high quality sources of meat and hay, as well as help helping to remove excess nutrients from river catchments. There are 1.6 million hectares of floodplains in England and Wales, and we hope that the Yellow Wagtail project can show landowners what can be achieved and encourage them to do something similar. The Yellow Wagtail is the flagship species for the project. And there are three wagtail species in the UK. Wagtails are small birds that are around 15 to 20 centimetres in length from head to tail. They are a similar shape to pipits, but have a much longer tail that they often wag up and down, hence the name. So we have the yellow wagtail, which is our only migrant species, and it spends its summers here in the UK where it breeds and then migrates back to West Africa for the winter. Then we have the grey wagtail and the pied wagtail, which are both resident species. The pied wagtail is the most easiest to identify due to its black and white plumage. And often people get confused between the yellow and the grey wagtail. Here you can see that the yellow wagtail has a brighter yellow underpart and a green brown upper part whereas the grey wagtail has a yellow white underpart and grey black upper part. The yellow wagtail has historically been viewed as a species of wetland habitats and was once widespread throughout England and Wales. In the late 1920s, flock sizes of around 400 birds were recorded, but much of the population has now contracted to the east and southeast of England. Overall, yellow wagtail populations have declined by 70% in farmland habitats and by 97% in wetland habitats since 1970. 
This species is now on the red list of birds of conservation concern and is a priority species on the UK Biodiversity Action Plan. Suggested drivers of decline include land conversion and declines in insect populations. So we believe that our project can bring back breeding pairs of yellow wagtails to our area. And we believe that they were a familiar visitor to our meadows and pastures around 60 years ago. We do know that they use our pastures today, both on passage to and from breeding grounds. So there is a real potential for this species to respond strongly to new management if we get these plans right. But the Yellow Wagtail project doesn't want to just bring back the Yellow Wagtail. We want to create a space for many other bird species like the Swift, Fieldfare, Swallow, Skylark, Snipe and the House Martin. The House Martin is another key species for our project and the local population has quite a sad story. In the 1950s, 500 house martin nests were recorded under Clifton Hampton Bridge, but from 1994 onwards, none have been found. We hope that the project can one day bring back numbers um, to what they once were. And part of the success story will be these wonderful creatures. Although cattle and the consumption of red meat are getting a lot of bad press at the moment, the cattle graze that graze our meadows will be key to the management and the success of the project. Cattle have been part of meadow management from the very beginning, and we are proud to be working with our enthusiastic and dedicated grazier, Emma. The cattle eat the carbon rich plants that we cannot digest, creating high quality healthy meat. As they consume the grass, they stimulate new plant growth, both above and below the soil and disperse seeds at the same time. Their dung is essential for many invertebrates like dung beetles, worms and flies, many of which pull the dung deep into the soil, providing the nutrients and carbon that the huge amounts of life in the soil need to grow, such as worms, bacteria and other microbes, fungi and many, many more. This soil biology has complex relationships with the plants and further promote their growth. Many birds are also associated with cattle, like house martins and yellow wagtails, which feed on the insects that follow the cattle around. In this image here, you can see a yellow wagtail just in front of the cow here. And this was taken in one of our pastures last summer. The Yellow Wagtail project has a number of goals, and these include bringing yellow wagtails back as a breeding species to the area as well as increasing the numbers of many other bird species like swifts and house martins. We want to see an explosion of dung beetles and clouds of midges, which are key food sources for many of these bird species. And we want to see healthy, contented cattle that need minimal veterinary treatments and happy graziers that have thriving businesses. We want a vibrant conservation priority focused research programme and once we have completed the project, we would like to see other farmers adopt our aims and methods. Here I wanted to give you an idea about how complex our project is and show you all the questions we have been asking to fulfil our goals. I won't go into too much detail, but our questions start from the soil and go all the way up to the cattle and fa farmers that manage the land. But overall, we want to find out how we can restore our wetlands, meadows and pastures to benefit biodiversity and support thriving farming businesses, and also how we can inspire other landowners to adopt similar practices. So if you spent any time along the Thames path last summer, you may have seen us collecting baseline data for the project, where we were carrying out invertebrate and vegetation surveys. So these are the three methods we used to collect our invertebrate data. Starting with emergence traps, these looked at the productivity of midges. And the idea is that the midges would emerge from the ground and make their way up our tent-like structure into the bottle, where we'd trap them and count them at a later date. Then we had the pitfall traps, which we used to measure the abundance of ground-dwelling invertebrates. You can't see it here because it's under the pie dish, which we use to protect it from the weather. But underneath, we have dug a hole where we put a beer cup. And the idea is that the invertebrates would wander along and then fall into the, into the trap. 
And then we have our suction sampling, which we used to understand the immediate abundance of invertebrates present in a cer certain area. And this is effectively a massive uh, vacuum that we use to suck up anything that's present in the area. Here are just a few of the invertebrates that we collected. Unfortunately, most of the photos were taken by hovering my phone over the eyepiece of the microscope which made it difficult to capture the amazing colours of many of the beetles. In our emergence traps, we found insects like midges, flies, parasitic wasps, small beetles, spiders, and even grasshoppers, which had somehow made their way into our trap. In our pitfall traps, we found things like ground beetles, carrion beetles, rove beetles, diving beetles, and spiders. And our suction samples contained much smaller invertebrates like springtails and aphids. One of my favourites is this green, green sox peacock, which is a ground beetle. You can just about see the fantastic peacock eyes on its ab abdomen. Another is the swollen thigh beetle, which is this beautiful green colour. And here are a few of the plant species that we found using our vegetation surveys. The most exciting meadow was Little Mead, which is the MG4 grassland, where we found species like king cups, meadow betchling and hairy vetch. There's also huge amounts of meadow sweet, which on warm days makes the whole meadow smell like sweet cucumber. Throughout the other meadows and pastures, we found species like common knapweed, dandelion, meadow and creeping buttercup, as well as ribwort. Some had large patches of creeping thistle, which we believe are due to high deposits of silt from previous flooding events. We also found wild angelica in the lower farm meadow. So what's next for the project? Last summer was really useful to understand which sampling techniques worked and which didn't. It also allowed us to get to know the meadows and pastures a bit more and develop the questions that we wanted to ask. We have since been working to refine our questions and data collection methods so that we can start collecting scientifically robust data. And we aim to continue this for the next 10 years or so, so that we can monitor how invertebrate populations change throughout the project and how they are affected by changes in land management. This year, we will be working with our grazier to trial mob grazing, which is a more regenerative approach and will allow the meadows and pastures to fully recover from grazing before they are grazed again. We are also looking forward to an experimental meadow restoration project that we aim to launch this summer across some of the degraded meadows and pastures. With this, we aim to identify the most appropriate restoration meadow uh, method for the meadows and we will be monitoring plant establishment and the invertebrate populations within the different treatments to determine their success. We are also advertising a self-funded PhD opportunity with the University of Reading, which will be looking at the role of livestock management on invertebrate communities in wet pastures. If you know anyone who might be interested, do get in touch. If you would like to learn more about the project or get involved, do contact me at sophie at wildoxfordshire.org.uk. If you'd like to stay up to date with the project, make sure to follow Wild Oxfordshire on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or you can sign up to our monthly bulletin via our website. If you spot a yellow wagtail or anything else exciting along our stretch of the River Thames, make sure to share this with us on social media via the ha hashtag yellow wagtail project. And don't forget to tell Teaburk. Thank you so much for having me and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have.